probably can't say it was primary day. And unfortunately, primary days in fact, there just hasn't been a lot of participation. So uh, what do you think? Uh, it was good to see you come out in the numbers. Um, and interestingly, since we're talking about elections, you might have noticed that it was a new district that Michael was running in. And uh, you'll have a new district as it relates to Senate that you'll vote on in November. And come next year, the city council, there'll be new district lines as well. And the preliminary lines right now have some pretty uh, big changes for the Woodhaven area. So I encourage you to look at the maps or try to get in touch with the Black Association to get you that link to see them online because there'll be public hearings. I think it's good news for Woodhaven. It actually puts you all together in one council district. Um, but, you know, in the past you've been represented by two members, and sometimes two members are better than one. However, right now in the preliminary line, my council district, which only right now has about a quarter of Woodhaven, would take in all of Woodhaven. So, uh, <laughs> so that is not a reason to clap. <laughs> but um, who knows? Who knows what will happen? They always, uh, lines always fluctuate, and I do uh, encourage people to come to the public hearings. Thank you for discussing the city council redistricting that's coming up. And as you mentioned, the proposed maps uh, put just about all of Woodhaven within a single district. Last month, Councilman Ulrich mentioned that this was uh, going to be an issue and perhaps Woodhaven would benefit from being unified in a single district. One thing I did notice is that there is about one block of 98th Street that has been cut out of that district. So I would say about 99% of Woodhaven is within this proposed district, but that extra 1% That'll make a difference to a whole lot of people who live on that block. Who lives on the block? Uh, not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's a. Uh, it would be good for them to put it in. Yeah. 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 So, so I, I guess I the question to you is: Do you stay out of it? Okay. I think it's unethical uh, for elected officials to design their own districts. Um, uh, I imagine Eric would the same. So I would encourage you to write a letter to the commission or to come in person. It's so reasonable to ask for that. It's just, it gets political for somebody who's going to run for the election. Yeah. Okay. Which I'm planning to do, but I haven't made any official announcements. So thank you, and uh, I hope you're, you know, I hope you did have a, a wonderful summer. Really endeavor to support the Block Association. Uh, I'm going to start redistricting a map from the city council. I think it's important that continuity be maintained in communities. And so, you know, I'm not advocating, as Liz mentioned, for specific lines. But I can surely advocate for my constituents and for the communities within my district. And I think that communities as a whole and people as a whole always benefit more from having the same elected officials in office. For instance, instead of the district running up far as Parkway as it does now and down 85th Street, talking about the city council districts. And if you live on one side of the block and your neighbor lives on the other and you need something done and you call, well, if you call my office, we're going to help you anyway. If you call Liz's office, we're going to help you anyway. But you shouldn't be told, well, you don't live in the district. You have to call so-and-so. You shouldn't get the runaround from city government. And I just think that from a community's perspective, communities have common bonds, common interests, common needs. There's a lot of commonalities in a community. that They shouldn't be sliced and diced and gerrymandered and divided into three or four districts. We have the same issue right now in, in Richmond Hill. And there's a lot of uh, press coverage, local media, uh, because there's a, a very large West Indian and Guyanese and, and Caribbean community there. And they have three different uh, city council people currently. And they have three different assembly people currently. And they have uh, two separate congressmen. Well, not one now because the judge threw the line. But, you know, Richmond Hill is, is a community that um, has been represented by many elected officials. And the people have been complaining about that for a long time. And it's very hard also for someone from that community, if they wanted to run for public office, which is their right, this is America, to get elected. Because they've split that vote into three or four pieces. 
It's not right. It's not right that we disenfranchise voters. It's not right that we divide up communities, that we carve them up into legislative uh, boundaries that are not fair to uh, minority populations, for instance. So I would say that the first draft that I saw of the, of the map was very good. Now, I'm obviously not happy about losing Woodhaven uh, because Atlantic Avenue becomes the new boundary, and they're not final lines. Uh, but I think that Woodhaven, just like I think where I live in Ozone Park, it should be in one district. It should be in one district. People ought to be able to hold their elected officials accountable. You know, it ought to be easy for them to know who represents them in the city council, in the assembly, the senate, and the congress. I just think that's the, the right thing to do. It's the fair thing to do. And so, you know, I'm not going to be at the hearings because, as Liz mentioned before, it is somewhat unethical for us to advocate specifically for which lines or what blocks we want in and what blocks we want out. But I would encourage you and continue to encourage you, as I did last month, to participate in that promise because they are listening. The commissioners are listening. This is a bipartisan commission of Democrats and Republicans, people appointed by the speaker, people appointed by the mayor, people appointed by the minority leader. So, and actually one of your former councilmen, Tom Nagnabetti, is one of the redistricting commission, uh, commissioners. So he's keenly aware of the needs of Woodhaven. You need to go to these hearings, submit testimony, speak in person if you can, because it is important. This will impact Woodhaven for the next 10 years, because they're not going to do this until the next census is completed. So I think it's very important that, that you participate in that process. Second thing I want to talk about.